All right. You want me to kick it off? Yeah. Why don't you kick it off? This is your video. <laughs> All right. I'm Mark, Kilo Delta 7, Delta Tango Sierra. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. And today we're going to be talking with Dylan Mutt, the president of the W6TRW Amateur Radio Club, about how to have your first couple CW contacts on the air. I'm Dylan Mutt and 6MX. And like Mark said, I'm president of the W6TRW Club this year. So Dylan, you've been spending a lot of time learning CW and doing listening practice. What do you want to know about how to actually put that to use? I'm still pretty new to it. I've only made a couple of contacts so far, and it's been both times with you there to guide me or, or to give me some advice in some way. On my own, I think it would be completely different. Uh, I've practiced with, um, with Morse Runner and, and different apps to try and learn CW, so I'm okay there. Some of the struggles that I'm currently facing are uh, trying to focus on what to say in an exchange uh, while talking with someone, also coping with maybe a faster speed than what I'm currently at, and how do I, how do I break into those people? Um, and then also my radio, which is an ICOM 705, does not have a CW decoder in it. So I don't have the advantage of having something that can help me along the way if I'm on my own. Why are you handing me the mic? He's the one that does CW. <laughs> I'm here for moral support other than be, be an idiot and, uh, and just try it, right? Give, the, give yourself the confidence to just do it, right? But the big thing is nobody, nobody that you're working, really, that you're trying to operate with is going to be upset if you like screw something up. They're just going to be like, yeah, they could probably tell that you're not a super strong operator like me um, that, you know, they just chalk it up to not a big deal. That's the first thing. But but you actually do this stuff. You come out here and make contacts, right? Yeah. And I'm not a particularly good Morse code operator either. I just have a high tolerance for embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, but he was doing fantastic earlier. But uh, I, I mean, look, if you get Morse code really wrong, nobody will ever know who you were. I uh, guess. <laughs> But but if you only get it mostly wrong, people are just going to be really excited to hear somebody new and they're going to come back and say, you know, again, or they're going to send a question mark. They're going to work with you and they're going to make sure that you get that contact because people are so excited by new operators. Do you have a home station, HS station? No, I mostly come out portable okay. or use our club shack. So a hunting poda and soda has been a way for me to practice a lot when I'm at home. But you could go to any park or, or you know, your club's ham shack uh, and you can work people that way because then you can have like a printout of what the common exchange is. And I found most of the time, this is me, you know, spoiler alert, not knowing what I'm doing. I'm really only looking for like my call sign back to me to know that they heard me. And then a number, like three numbers or a five NN repeated. And then I'm like, OK, we're good. Because that's all you really exchange. Uh, POTA, sometimes they do the state, right? They do the state in the exchange. But uh, yeah, Thomas Witherspoon has a video on the exchange. Really simple. You can look the exchange up online. Um, I mean, what do, what do you do? Are you just used to it, right? You just know the exchange now? Or what do you do? So when I got started, I was very bad at Morse code. I got licensed at 13 words a minute way back in the day. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's and then I, 90s. Yeah. And then I didn't use it for over a decade. And I basically forgot how to operate Morse code. And I'd never operated in the field. And so when I started relearning Morse code, one, I had an Elmer who was very patient and uh. would do practice sessions with me. But two, the nice thing about hunting Poda is you don't even have to get their call sign, technically speaking, because oh. they'll log you. So, oh, that's true. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to log them. They submit the logs. They submit the, the logs for you. So I would see in, in my own profile did i get the contact if they got my call sign and logged it that meant that it worked yes yeah oh, okay yeah so my my first fire month, and forget of hammering fire and forget my first month of hunting poda i was just absolutely terrible uh. <laughs> <laughs> so as you start actually make getting it into the logs you're like oh i did it this time yeah i was like oh okay. they they got me <laughs> <laughs> okay um the other thing as far as practice you've been you said you're using morse runner mm -hmm. i've not used that have you used that before I actually have used Morse Runner. What is it, like Temple Run for Morse code? <laughs> <laughs> it's it, like a contest simulator. Oh, okay. I have heard of that. Um, it gives you pile-ups and QSP. And... <laughs> I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing it at that level and practicing, that's pretty good. 
That's really good, actually. Have well, you... I'm new at it still, okay. so I'm, I'm just practicing. Mark got me onto it, and I downloaded it. So, see, I learned something today, too. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, have you joined, like, Long Island CW Club? No. Okay. It's tough for people that actually have, like, busy lives to be able to attend the classes, but they do have classes, like, they have, like, 70 classes a week or something like that, I heard, and you can go to any of them. That's the one that I tell people that are busy. Oh, okay. You can go to any of them. Yeah, you, there's no, there's no... So there's like a, your skill level and you try and go to those classes, but you could go to any of the classes, a beginner, an intermediate, an extreme, hyper advanced. They don't care. Yeah. Okay. That's a little bit different from CW Ops. Then, Much different. Because I've heard that CW Ops is a commitment and you have to keep going. Yeah, I failed. I flunked out of that one because uh, I just got too busy. I was doing travel for work. Um, we were having a baby. And I was just like, no, man, I, I got to go. And they were not too happy about that because you're, you're supposed to roll with your cohort kind of thing. And I, and I just eh, didn't work. OK, so the Long Island one is, is better in the sense that it's more flexible. You can go when you want. Better for flexibility. I think they're both great. You have to kind of know to yourself like what you're capable of doing. And that's usually what I recommend is go with whichever one you think is going to be the most effective. Inside. Yeah. So what do you do if you start making mistakes if you're talking to someone live? Shut the radio off immediately and go, go cry in your bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, or, or you could take the more traditional approach of just sending a long, confused string of dits. <laughs> yes. How do you do that? Uh, usually one dit followed by several other dits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, well, I don't know. I don't think there's an etiquette and protocol for a lot of dits, but I always go like dit, 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 dit versus just holding it and letting it dit out. But I don't know. Is it yeah, just dit, 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 dit. And then you could start over. And then you just you start know. over. It's There's no delete key, but it's sort of the equivalent of a radio whiteout. <laughs> backspace. You're like, forget, forget what you just heard. CW backspace. <laughs> You'll probably hear a lot of dits from me then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just did like 18 of them to, uh, trying to make contact with K6ARK. <laughs> yeah. I, an, another one, if, if you get really confused, you can always do QRS, which means slow down. You can always send again if you didn't catch something, AGN. Um, the universal da-da-da-da did it. Frankly, when you get started, it's going to be a lot of da-da-da-da did it. Question mark. <laughs> Question marks. Question marks for days. Yep. All right. <laughs> And then how about if you're, if you're just, uh, if you've got key fright, is that a, a term, key fright? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, what? Don't, don't, don't have key fright. I don't, like, I don't know how you, um, what is it, two shots of tequila, um, and then, and then you really get to show off the dit, 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 dit. No, I, I don't know that there's a good way around it other than. You just have to tell yourself it doesn't really matter. Like there's nobody, again, there's nobody that's coming to your door like, you did bad Morse code on Tuesday. You know, nobody cares that much, right? So I don't know. What do you do? You just did it, right? You're just like, today we do it. I'm an extrovert. I love talking yeah. to people. Morse code is just another way to yell into the void. <laughs> uh, if you're an introvert, though, um, Morse code lets you talk to people without really talking to people. It was good. Uh, it, it's kind of a backdoor into having social interactions. Having the, uh, the exchange printed out and on hand will probably help ease that because then you're kind of just working the script. You may not even be copying 50% of what they're sending and you could still just be rolling through your script and it doesn't really matter because the information is still being exchanged. As long as you hear a number, right? So three digits, write down those three digits, maybe their location. And if they're a soda or poda, you can just look on the web for that once you get their call sign. And then you just keep working the script. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You are. Da, 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 da. Okay. okay. I, li you know I like I mean? that script idea because that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes it sound a little bit more like a manual FT8. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> <laughs> like me. There, there is a ham somewhere that is cringing <laughs> all the way back in time. With, we refer to Morse code as manual FT8. <laughs> I am going to use that, man. That is a winner right there. <laughs> There's your gateway. Manual FTA today. You know how you do FTA? Now you can do manual FTA. Oh, it's so much. Oh, that's good, man. That's a killer. You just turned red. I, I love that. I'm, I'm going to kiss that. Oh, yeah. We're, we're doing manual FTA today, Tom. <laughs> so, so seriously, though, the, my wife's very first CW contact was with me when I went home for Christmas. And, and she had just learned the alphabet. And so I wrote her out a script. I said, you know, these are the lines we're going to use. I'm going to send exactly this. And here you send back like these characters. Yeah. 
And so when we were doing it, she could literally just go character by character and I would send exactly what was in the script. And we had a great QSO and it was really exciting for me personally. <laughs> She's got... She's got uh, Instagram reels and she's just. <laughs> she's so much better than I am. Is she really? Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Now, that was, you know, all of three months ago, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. She learns fast. <laughs> but you also, I mean, did you, you made a contact with K6ARK today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so I made one. Yeah. I had Mark's help. He was there sure. to tell me what to send when I couldn't copy what ARK was sending. Mm-hmm. And well, not because of any fault of his own, it's just because my ear is not trained enough. Yet. Well, but Adam is a good operator. He can actually pick up people that aren't good, such as myself. But mm-hmm. that's another thing. I'm not trying to like give the big shout out for the Long Island CW Club, but a lot of the ops are really, really good. And they'll have a class where you all get on the same frequency, no matter where you're at. And if you can hear the station uh, via Zoom or whatever, they'll help you through the QSO remotely. So my first contact was actually with Howard, the the one of the presidents of the the club, and he over the internet basically walked me through helping to decode what I wasn't picking up with the other station, and so I had my little script, the the exchange, and I worked through that to the best of my ability while he kind of helped bridge the gap on some of the copying because that's always the the trick is the copying. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was amazing. That really also lowered my anxiety because. Howard, take the take the key. You know, he was working most of the stuff for me, the hard part, and I could just focus on the the drive and the, the characters out, which was easier. Yeah. Would you also recommend having uh, a Morse code translator sheet, like cheat sheet on the side? It, it feels like train. Well, you, I'll, yeah, whatever, you tell me what you think, but it feels like training wheels a little bit that you might have a hard time freeing yourself of. Okay. But I don't know. What do you think? Because you run it. You you really want to do instant character recognition. Yeah. So I didn't actually have a decoder until I was good enough to not need it. Okay. And and at that point, then if I'm operating, I'm talking to my friends, I get distracted, then maybe there's some characters on the screen and it can save me asking for a repeat. But I don't use it if I don't absolutely have to. Okay. Yeah, oddly enough, that was what uh, Ray Novak told me. He's like, the reason why we don't put a, a CWD code in, in our radios is because it's a, it's a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong. I mean, it's, it's something that you, you should learn the characters and focus on decoding them <laughs> as quickly as, you know, as best you can without a tool to help you, right? Because then now you've added that extra step to look at the screen, read that, write it down. Versus it just going straight through almost like a language, right? Like you learned a word versus I have a universal translator that's giving me the word I know and I'm writing it down, right? That's, okay. That was always what I was told by many hams. Many hams have told me that. So, yeah. 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 I actually have a, a cool example. One of my, uh, my friends and one of the good chasers around here is, uh, is losing some of his sight. And one of the things Elecraft did for their blind operators is they built in Morse code menus. So you can use the Elecraft radios if you are fully blind by listening to the menu system. Wow. That's pretty cool. I don't know. Do you feel like you're ready to get back on the air? Yeah. Let's go. I love it. Good job. Thanks, guys. Go team. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>